Hey folks, welcome back to Mara Farm. It's Farmer Scott here again. Uh, and today we're gonna talk about seeds. We have a lot of different seeds at the farm that we're always planting to grow our vegetables. And we're gonna look at a few different seeds and kind of see where they come from. So most of our vegetables start with the seed. We have to plant that seed in the ground um, and water it and it gets some sunshine and it grows into our plants. But when they start out, they're really small, like these seeds down here. This one over here, this first one is cilantro. These little, these little brown balls here are cilantro seeds. Cilantro is actually one of my favorite things to help season food with. It's kind of a medium sized seed. Some are bigger, some are smaller. Our next one here are peas. And that's one of the biggest seeds that we plant out here. They're nice and big and easy to plant. Um, and these kind of look like just dried out peas, which actually is exactly what they are. When you get like frozen peas or canned peas, all those little green balls to eat, um, if you were to let them grow a little bit longer on the plant and dry out, you would get these. So when you're eating peas, you're actually eating seeds, um, which, uh, which is something most people don't realize. Our next one, is one of the smallest seeds out here. I'm not even gonna pick these up. I don't know if you'll be able to see them on my hand, but these very tiny ones on the seed packet here, these are carrot seeds, and they are so, so small. They're actually kind of hard to plant. because They're hard to feel with your fingers, um, but each, each little carrot seed there will grow up into a big, delicious carrot. And this last one here, let's see if you can guess it. Do you have any guesses what this seed might be? It's one of my favorite vegetables. It's nice and crisp and juicy, and it makes me think of summer. And if you guessed cucumbers, you are correct. These are cucumber seeds. Next time you slice open a cucumber, you can actually see the seeds starting to form inside of it um, when you're eating it. So next time you slice open a cucumber, take a look. All right, welcome out to the cilantro plants here in the garden. Uh, this is what the cilantro looks like when you see it in the store. It is one of my favorite things to season food with, and it is so delicious. Um, and we let the cilantro flower because it attracts a whole bunch of beneficial insects to the garden. But then after the flowers get pollinated by a honeybee or some other little pollinating insect buzzing through, then they start to form the seeds. And we can actually look, if we get closer in here, we can see the flowers. And we can see over here, some of the flower petals have fallen off and it's starting to make some seeds. Are nice and big here, but they need to dry out more. So these, we are gonna let grow a little bit more and dry out a little bit more and then we'll save these seeds and they'll look just like these ones and we will plant these ones for next year. All right, now we're over with the snap peas and I know I said cilantro is one of my favorites, but these snap peas are really, really one of my favorites. They are so sweet and delicious. And remember we started with these seeds here and they look like just wrinkled up old peas, which is kind of exactly what they are. And we plant these and nurture them and they grow into these big plants here. And then these pea pods form. Let me find a nice big juicy one. Here's one in here. These pea pods form. And if we open it up, there's a bunch, oh, I dropped one. There's a bunch of little peas starting to grow in there, little, uh, little seeds. And these are just the dried up versions of those so we can if we let these grow longer and let them dry out, we can save those seeds for next year. But these are so delicious and you can eat the whole thing that I'm just gonna eat it. All right, one last thing about seeds before we go uh, is that seeds have to travel. So if that cilantro or those peas just produce all those seeds and they just drop right in place, you have hundreds and hundreds of plants competing for a very small amount of water and sunlight and space and nutrients. And so seeds develop all these amazing ways to travel. This one you're probably familiar with. This is dandelion here, the big yellow flowers. And then once they get pollinated, they 
do this and you can actually see at the bottom here, those are all little seeds with a parachute on top. And so that is its really amazing way that it travels is it uses the wind and it flies around um, and takes those seeds wherever they need to go. And you and I might recognize it just from blowing it because it's kind of fun to do. So that's one way and there are a lot of other plants. Maybe you could even think of some that, uh, that kind of use flight to help travel. They don't have legs like us, so they have to do other things. This one is a really interesting plant. I call this one the Velcro plant because it sticks to you like Velcro. These are the seeds here, and they stick to you when you walk by. And Velcro was actually invented by someone who kept walking through fields and kept noticing that these were getting stuck to his clothing and wondered, how does it actually work? And so he looked at it under a microscope and saw it's a bunch of little hooks. There's a lot of other ways that seeds develop to travel. Maybe you can think of some. Maybe I'll, I'll leave you with, uh, with a question. How do you think that like a raspberry or a strawberry or some other berry, how do you think that they've developed to travel? Maybe you can uh, do some research and, and be a scientist and figure out how do those seeds travel. Okay, thanks for coming with the, down to the farm and uh, learning about seeds with me. See you next time.